the Arizona Copper Art Museum. Uh, we are at the Arizona Copper Art Museum. There I go. We are at the Arizona Copper Art Museum. I right, go in. Okay. Glad you're here now because this place is going to be packed in about one more hour. Oh. Okay, just let you know we have 40, 50 people coming through to do. We have to follow those footprints because they are going to present a complete tour and not in any other town in the United States. There are 55,000 other towns in the USA. Only Clarkdale, Arizona has a copper museum. That panel's wide. Boys' rooms down this way. <laughs> so forth. Okay? In this museum, you can take pictures of everything. Imagine that. In this museum, you can touch everything. Imagine that. Whoa. This will be the only museum <laughs> in the United States where you can touch all the artifacts. Touch them, touch them, hold them, grab them, whatever you wish. The only thing we ask is. So we're gonna keep following these. So come on out here. So our first panel is, what is copper? You probably are thinking, what is that stuff? Copper is a metal that we find in our earth and it looks like this. So we're gonna let you grab this piece so you can see what the metal's like. Ready? It's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. Is, is he able to hold it? Yeah, can he carry it? Oh, it's pretty heavy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and what's fun about copper is it looks like that when it's laying on the ground right there. And when you're walking along, you see that or you trip right over that. You see that green thing? Now, copper is a fun metal of color. There are only two metals that have color. And look at this chart that's coming up right now. Copper and gold are out of all the metals. There they are, are the only two that have color. All other metals are gray, considered colorless, and so forth. So, copper and gold are your only two metals that you'll find in Pure Nugget, naturally. So you walking along, you're gonna find them. Guess what else is cool about copper and gold? They're the only two metals that last permanently and forever. They're eternal metals. Mm. This nugget right here, and this one in my hand, already 1.1 billion years old, it's still around. 1.1 billion years from today, this nugget, all the copper in this museum rusts away. So whatever you have today, you will have 100 million years from today. But we can find it by color. Copper stains everything light blue in color, okay? When I say everything, I mean everything. See my shirt? This big figures that you see all over the place and so forth. There's some more information as well. Up here we have our first seven metals that you discovered, that we can discover as people, just simply walking along and using a couple techniques, simple things. Copper and gold, your first two metals discovered. Notice how they have color. All other metals are gray. There's your proof, right? Silver, tin, and lead, those are the next metals discovered. And of course, iron and mercury were discovered later on. So, iron. Early man could not melt iron because it melts at a very high melting point. So how did early man discover iron in the world when it only forms in rock? The answer is easy. We have a great case of it in the state of Arizona. Iron-based meteorites hit the earth and people picked them up, carried them all over the place. And they revered those pieces because they were extra special. In them. The next metal is mercury that was discovered. Mercury is a very fun metal. It's the only liquid on this planet that will not get your skin or clothing wet. It's the only metal. Inside of it is mercury and if you were to shake it, it would just shake and flow like water. And if you look closely, if you could get right up there and step Other relationships called associations. This panel tells you some fun stuff. Copper, our first metal, is associated to things in the world. 
Copper and the planet Venus share the same symbol. Same thing for this lady here. She shares the same thing, symbol as copper. And the hanging gardens of Babylon in our ancient history. Got some fun stuff, okay? Now, we got some others up here. Mercury, Mercury the planet, Mercury the messenger. You can sort of get it. Gold, the sun, Apollo the sun god. Statue of Rhodes was the Apollo. It's sort of more adult stuff, but it's also fun. Now, here's the fun part. Of Okay, you probably understand that Sunday is named after the sun, right? That's pretty easy. The rest of the days of the week are all named after... Friday is Venus Day. Now, if you don't believe me, come down here and look at this one. We're going to look at Wednesday, okay? Wednesday is Mercury Day in our world, okay? It associates to Mercury, and if you go to Latin countries, Wednesday turns into Mercury Day or Mercury D in your different languages and so forth. All your days of the week. Monday. You get it. Okay, we're gonna go into this first room. Do the footsteps. Hello there. How are you guys today? You're the youngest ones in the world. This beautiful school building and these floors are all original to this building as well. So up here we have a map where you find copper in the world. You can flip through here and see if there's copper in your continent. And you can find out just by looking through. Here's Australia. So, notice those little symbols there? And other continents like Africa, I wasn't so lucky. Okay. But maybe they have a lot of gold or diamonds, huh? Uh, <laughs> this island sits out in the Mediterranean Sea. It's way out in Europe, by Asia, and all that. Egyptian That's where copper got its name. Romans and the Greeks and the Egyptians all got their copper from that island. You on that element chart. That stands for copper, that CU. That CU originates from that island, the island of copper in our history. Here we showcase the United States. So you guys are from like California? Yeah, let's find out if California has any copper in it. And look at there, there's lots of copper in California. It might not be in production though. Okay, so we have copper. Minnesota, we have copper. Copper's everywhere. Look at that. All over, even in New Jersey. Just everywhere. So you flip through that to your favorite state. Mines. Mm -hmm. The reason for mining is this museum. Oh. Artifacts, things that people want. That's why. So for so. Up here, check these out. You probably are gonna tell me these stand for something. I'm going to tell you they stand for many things. Yeah, yeah. It happens to be the symbol for copper. Yeah. Copper's had that symbol for 5,000 years. This happens to be the symbol for the metal iron. This happens to be the symbol for Venus, the planet. This happens to be the symbol for Mars, the planet. This is a symbol for Venus herself. You'll learn about that in a bit. Here she is again. That's her symbol. This is Mars. That's Mars's symbol. This is Venus's hand mirror. That's her mirror that she would hold in the oh. okay. This is Mars's shield and spear, mythical. Okay. That's a symbol we gave copper and iron. And there's one more thing. About 700 years ago, these two symbols became the gender symbols for all things boys and girls. This symbol is a symbol for girls. This symbol is a symbol for boys. These two symbols. This symbol is beautiful. It has a beautiful color. It's soft to the eye. It's appealing. <laughs> this symbol is hard and doesn't have any color. It's because it's a symbol for boys who are stronger and girls who are more beautiful. That's why these two symbols were given. I one of the top ten paintings in the world. Oh, yeah. In the Western world, of course. It's sitting in Italy, right? Oh, you look at it, you say, what's this copy of this painting? And what's interesting about it is it's all about copper. It's not about a woman on the clamshell. It's about copper. So let's dive into this painting and find out what's going on. Because when you go to Italy and a savvy museum guy, he's not going to tell you. Or this landmass right here. 
that just happens to be the island of copper in our history. She's coming ashore to the island of copper. Around the island of copper, the water is very blue because copper stains everything blue. To make the paint for this painting, that blue and greens have to have copper first. Mm. You cannot make it. Okay. Most of the painting is made with copper, by the way, and so forth. She's very reminiscent of beauty. Copper is the metal of beauty. She's the goddess of beauty. Notice her hair, also reminiscent to the color of copper. Guess what? That thing lives off of blue blood, not red blood. Our blood's red because we have iron in it, like the red rocks of Sedona in Arizona. We have lots of copper in Arizona. Arizona is the sixth largest producer of copper in this world. So there's copper everywhere around the state. And when you went to Bisbee, you probably saw some of those big pits. And Jerome you know, was underground. And there's 90 miles of tunnels under the town of Jerome. You went to Bisbee and you just went in about a mile. We got 90 more miles in Jerome. Oh. Except you can't go in them in Jerome. <laughs> so holes and some artifacts from the Copper State. These are different things that you can find in antique stores. All about the Copper State, which you're in. Up here we have some ancient tools, weapons, Iron Age, Bronze Age, helmets, different things in the museum to showcase to you. Copper over here, copper stains, things blue. Check out those rocks there that are blue. Even the rock called turquoise is blue because of copper. And up here we have, we talk more about painting on copper. All these famous paintings you see here, all of them have copper. And even gold has copper in it. Ever hear of 12 karat gold or 18 karats gold? Mm -hmm. Well, you wonder what that is? It's 18 parts gold, six parts copper. See, we always add copper into our gold because copper and gold have color. Mm -hmm. So you can mix the two metals. It tells you what you're seeing in the sky. You probably look up there and see beautiful colors in the sky when they have fireworks, right? Guess blue comes from a metal called copper. So copper's everywhere. Even famous paintings like this one here. Copper is the best material to ever paint on. Let's find out why. This is Venus. That's that painting over there. That painting's on copper. Your paintings stay as original as day one. Wow. Oh, so they do not age when you paint on copper. You can paint them on no. copper. If that was painted in <laughs> copper, it should look like that. Now, see that. If you look closely, those background colors are all copper colors. Wow. Now local artists did that. So you could paint on copper. Sorry. So then you, when, you, when you paint on it, it would be blue already. Paint on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like sheet like pennies. Guess who that is? That's Mr. Redmond in the history of the world today. They're about the size of a postcard. And one recently was bought up by the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. Want to know something? I thought kids were going to like this copper comic book. But guess what I found out? I was wrong. Adults like this copper comic book much better than kids. Wow. Yeah. I guess it's dated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to get it refreshed. So let's go into the art room here. We checked on some art stuff. That's what this museum's about art. And art is things we make. You and I, and folks like us in this room, and some of us then into artifacts. So in this room, we start artillery rounds, or like bullets that shoot out of a pistol, okay? Yeah. Well, in wartime, sometimes the casements get big. What this museum's about, we're about art, okay? We're about how somebody would pick these yeah. up and then hand Now guys like us could send home a flower vase to our loved ones back home. So now we have a vase. Put some flowers in there. Got to remember something very important. A hundred years ago, we didn't go down to Walmart to buy things. We had to make our own things. And this kind of art that's in this room are things that we all can make. All it takes is time and repetition. Okay? So it's fun. Let's look at some. I have a pirate's cannon in this museum. Check this out. You ever hear that movie called 
Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a famous Jack Sparrow pirate Hollywood movie star, right? And you can touch a real cannon right there. Can you touch it? That's a pirate's cannon. It came from the South Pacific, not far from Borneo. A real one. And those famous Hollywood movie stars that make Check that out. That's a shell? Real pirate. And that's made of copper, which is some of Irish. And these are brass. Brass is copper too. And oh, people did it. this work. They were thinking of their loved ones back home, maybe moms and dads, and they would hammer out these flower bases using a hammer and a punch. That's a tool. They would tool them to make them look like that. And look. This will probably be the largest selection of these that you'll see anywhere in any museum. And here they are in a little tiny town of 4,000 people. And you know why they're here? They show you what people do with from it. We make electricity from it. Copper is used everywhere. You probably didn't know it, but copper has been with you since your first day of life. Copper is currently with you right now and will be with you in the future. Guaranteed, copper is your best friend. There's beer steins, things that you would see that decorate the room. Any questions? Any questions, boys? You might want to ask a question like, where did the metal come from to make these shell casings in here, or these flower vases? And guess where it came from? Tiny little towns like Clarkdale and Bisbee, Globe. And it takes copper to make these. We're going to go out in the hallway and see some cool They have to watch door a little bit. Yeah, 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 sort of keep an eye on. Now, we're going to show you some fun stuff here first. In this music. Copper? Oh, what's next to the little copper diamond right there? What's Footprint? that? Footprint? Paw prints. There's 320 paw prints in this mu museum building. 20s. Cats change. <laughs> we hybrid. So we pulled them up and took a picture of them, and we think that might have been red blood in the world. Here's the red blood. It has iron in it. All these animals here live on red blood, okay? And people do too. Red blood's the most common type of blood in the world. If we cut ourselves, we will all bleed red, all of us. However, there's a second cut these critters they will all bleed blue. And this guy is not a guy, I'm sorry. I was corrected by the school students. They tell me all sorts of things. That's a girl, that spider. And if we were to step on that girl spider, she would bleed blue. Remember when you're driving down the road and those insects hit your windshield? All sorts of things. Every living thing on this planet has copper in it. Even the grass blades out front have copper. All life forms. There's no way around it. You cannot be allergic to copper, by the way, either. Here's all the different roles and so forth of copper. You can scroll through them if you wish. If you're into certain things, you hear about copper. People wearing copper braids. Copper. Even breakfast cereal, Count Chocula. <laughs> Lots of copper and Count Chocula and those other different breakfast foods and so forth. Baby foods, foods for seniors and adults. Wine is full of copper. We even put it in there on purpose. We have some copper here. Here's oh, a copper grab bar. Copper doorknob. Did you notice the doorknobs on the school building here? They're all made of copper from 100 years ago, right? And other doorknobs. Grab the germs there. Oh, no. Go ahead, touch it. <laughs> put your germs on there. Touch that bar. Grab it. It's the cleanest thing you're ever going to do. So you can touch it. Go like that. Touch. See that? You're putting germs on my bar in the museum. That's terrible. <laughs> but guess, guess what it is? A kitchen. <laughs> it's a grocery cart handle in the grocery store. <laughs> Plastic and stainless steel, the two germiest surfaces you'll ever touch. Uh. We're gonna see some more art stuff. And look at all those footprints. They're everywhere. See them all? See all those dots? That cat was crazy in here. <laughs> what a crazy cat. Oh, he went everywhere. Even clocks are made out of copper in history. That's an old pendulum clock. That's a 
first type of cloth most people ever honed right there. Just fun stuff. All these different things are made out of copper. All right, in here. Stay next to the pot. Please. <laughs> We're going to go a little bit faster as we go through. But we have copper cloth everywhere. And from the, um, Even from the, the sea, from the earth, from all over the place. Famous homes in the United States. This piece right here came off of a famous house in New York City. Mr. Andrew Carnegie's house. That's from his house. That's an original piece of it. We have it here in Clarkdale for one reason. To show you what happens to copper. That way you can find out about it. Gargoyles up. Those are draining spots for roofs and architecture and so forth. Houses and big hotel buildings, they're always made out of copper. And copper turns green. Remember. Okay, different artifacts, artwork, vases. We have vases from all over the world. Up here we have a vase from Syria. Right here, a vase from China. Right there, India, Belgium, Italy, India again. Italy, Mexico, pieces coming from Russia, pieces are coming from everywhere in this world to this museum so we can tell our story here. That's what we're doing, a complete story. In this room we have paintings, pictures, more vases, architecture pieces. We just polished that whole tray set there. See that tray set? That's a really beautiful set. I think girls would like that a lot for serving tea and stuff. Sort of devalue. Not much, though. You, you would lose a hundred dollars, five thousand. So copper made trays and plates and cookware every day. Paintings in our own homes. You know the paintings in history were all who could afford copper. People can't afford those famous paintings. The general people didn't get those. Normal people all had copper in their house. This is our religious room. And in here we showcase religious stuff, but mainly from the Catholic faith in here, okay? In this museum room, we have a video of somebody wants to touch screen that. You can touch it and it talks a story about this. The Copper Scroll is an ancient document uh, that was found actually in 1952 during excavations. Oh, We think, first of all, there were some scrolls that were found in near the ancient lost Ark of the Covenant. Those treasures, they believe, are on this scroll. This is a copy of that scroll. Original ones over in Jordan in a museum and so forth. But since it's uncovered, we talk about it here. So other things in this room are sort of religious in nature. Lots of people have faith. These are some of the items that they would have had. And in churches as well. So you're going through, you'll see all sorts of things with maybe Jesus or chalices like this one. And people give me things all the time in this museum. Somebody gave me that the other day, and we just bought another one for the Isn't museum. It? This one would have been where they would hold the chalice. In the Catholic faith, you have the Eucharist and the, uh, your, um, your drinking oh. chalice for the wine. Uh, it would have been in there the wine vessel. And it's locked when, you know, they do all that kind of stuff. And so cool. This is why we mine. So we can have things. Here's the different. Those look like tea kettles, water kettles. People decorated them to make them into art. They're more fancy. Okay? Let's go meet a famous woman. So down here we follow those copper footprints and all of a sudden we're at this copper woman over here. 
She's made entirely of copper. And remember, copper turns green like the Statue of Liberty. Her name is Vaivisha. Okay? She has a counterpart or a, sort of like a friend. Bacchus. And you may have heard of Mr. Bacchus. He's the mythical god of wine in the Roman world. She's Vaivisha, the mythical Roman goddess of wine. Green eyes. She's got a green thumb and a green arm. What else does she have that's green? She's got a bunch of green on her, doesn't she? She even lives in the Green Valley of Arizona, known as the Verde Valley. And guess where she moved from? She moved from New York City to here. Mm. Our population now is 4,001. <laughs> We're getting more and more people here all the time. There's one of them. Somebody shot her in New York. See those little pellet or little marks? Somebody took a shotgun and shot her. So she didn't like living there anymore. So she moved to Clarkdale where there's lots of wine. We have lots of wine growing in this region. Sort of like the Napa Valley, but we're much to drink. That's what she's famous for. She can never get a headache from drinking either. She's drinking and probably did not get caught. <laughs> and a whole bunch of other things. So let's keep following those footsteps. Now, sometimes we have people that come to the museum here and they give us things like this case here. These are old electrical items. And there's a guy who's an electrician and he collected those pieces up for years and are for light bulbs and other things, switches and different stuff he collected over years. We put them on what people used in history. So you know not to. Let's go into the kitchen. And this room's all about not cooking, <laughs> cooking, everything cooking. In our history, we only had one metal to cook from, one in our history. And that metal was copper. All those new metals are just recent. Copper's been hanging around as cookware for 5,000 years. The ancient Egyptians had copper. All the ancient countries and cultures, they all had copper. Nobody had aluminum. Nobody had stainless steel. Those are new metals. Only in the last 200 years have we had cast iron even. Only in the last 100 years have we had uh, aluminum. Only in the last 50 years have we had stainless steel. So only copper has been with us since day one. And in this room is proof you cooked on copper. The metals available in history. Up here we have some miniatures, I think. Check out all these miniatures. We just did that. And you know what's really cool in this museum? You're only gonna see it in Clarkdale, Arizona, I guarantee you. Because we make all the displays. Washington, D.C., you're not gonna see our displays because we make them in-house. Made in-house, on-site by me and one other guy. We can do it. And that means you can do it too, okay? And then note that, and the little tables and the shelves, all that in there, we make on site by the guys that work here. So we have all sorts of people. Stonework is all done on site. The mural is made in house. That's, we do it here because we have to be different, okay? Any questions? There's many reasons we don't like copper, and that's one of them right there. We don't like copper because it's heavy, yes. very heavy, and it's expensive. See how you're struggling with that thing? It's just like big old weight, and people don't like weight like that when they cook. And then, and she looked at it, she couldn't believe I could bake so good. And then she looked at it closer and found out it was made out of plastic. <laughs> Yeah, doesn't that look pretty good? Tasty, it looks good, doesn't it? Strawberries look real. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I faked her out pretty good. Over there are loafers. That's another type of shoe. Yeah, and then over here we have other shoes and sandals and all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, uh, look at those things. You probably don't recognize those things, but I bet you these two guys recognize <laughs> those things. They're probably, what are those? There's probably hundreds of millions of vinyl records, and every last one of them started on copper. Copper, copper makes all sorts. 
bronze makes tone and resonance from bells and gongs and things. Horns made of brass and copper. You blow whatever, French horn or whatever instrument you may have. Always made out of copper. Well, museums always have copper in them. Here's copper. There's copper. These are famous paintings. You can browse through that whole thing. It lasts for about 10 See, minutes. I never noticed that. I always yeah. noticed that the person. It's, yeah, they're oh. everywhere. Still life paintings, especially, where you do like kitchen scenes. They always have lots mm. of copper in them. So, copper was the only metal. Copper and iron. But copper was the only metal to use for cooking and around water. So you always have it. Pewter's, pewter has copper in it, too. That is no one he owned all that. He owned the port of Los Angeles. Our town founder, this town, he's the this town produced billions of pounds of copper, silver, and gold. Created automatically became the richest American woman of all time. Just by inheriting. And look, at here we have some tubs. Copper tubs. And you know what's so funny about those tubs? We have two mannequins in there. And look at those tubs are to make people talk to each other called conversation tubs. See that? And you even have a place and spur conversation. But are they talking to each other? No. Why aren't they talking to each other in this museum? It's because they don't have cell phones. Those are millennials. <laughs> you got to get them some cell phones. They don't know how to talk. See? Look. She's a copper and liquids. All about liquids. You're probably just thinking, what's that glass doing in this museum? That's not right for a metal museum. This is metal, metal. That's glass. Remember I told you, colors come from metals? There's your proof. Blue comes from copper. The green over there comes from iron. The red glass comes from gold. Mix a couple of those metals together and you end up with purple. Did you know there's seven of those metals on the wall down there? How many colors of the rainbow are there? Seven. Seven colors of the rainbow. Seven metals. You make those, we'll make all the colors you can make. Today we have five primary colors. Okay? A lot of times in this museum. And I ask people to help me out with some clues. You think you can help me out with some clues in figuring out how old things are? Take a look. Let's see if you can find a clue on there. 1681. See, that's pretty fast. <laughs> You're a good musician. You, you want to work here? <laughs> I want to hire you. You're pretty good. So let's find a clue. Let's, now let's see how good you are. Let's find a clue on this one. And I'll tell you it's on the top there. See if you can find out how old that one is. 1730. See that? That's pretty good. How about over here? <laughs> See if you can find a clue on that one. Oh man, and look at now sometimes we're gonna look harder. And we're gonna look at this one. Okay? Sometimes you might have to open them up to find the clues, okay? 1732. See that? Oh fast, man. Nice. Super fast. And remember, in this museum, you can touch things. Go ahead and touch it. It's old, but you can touch it. Dark blue comes from a newer metal called cobalt. Cobalt mm. blue, the color. And remember, we got fun things in the museum, like those cat prints. Well, we found other things in this museum building. Look at that. Somebody chipped out that wall right there. Why would somebody try to chip out the wall in this building? Kids artifacts from our high school, right there. And these are the students that went through. Right here. Different students that actually graduated from this building and so forth. And we're going to go in and see that vault. Let's go look at the vault. This is the vault. And see if you can find some critters in there. There's some critters in that vault. You can find them? Yeah. They're fake critters, though. And notice how thick that, that wall is on that vault. That is 16 inches thick, the wall. Can you imagine hammering through that to break in there? And guess how much money we found in that vault when we got in? How much? 
70 cents. <laughs> <laughs> not much, huh? It's not much. So when wine and vineyards and breweries, and it's mostly for adults, things for the vineyard, different tools for the winery, stills and so forth for the making alcohol. What's that guy doing in here? That's a dragon. You know why he's in here? He guards this room because sometimes adults get wild in here. So we gotta have a guard and that guard needs us. We gotta get it, we gotta change its name. You got some good ideas for dragon names? If you think of one, you let me know, okay? We'll change its name because Elliot, that's a good girl. What name do you want to call the dragon boy? Um, Okay, we got some tools, things for wineries and breweries and distillers. They're not made of copper, they're made of iron. Iron is another metal that's been hanging around forever, by the way. And notice these things. The other day I had a fifth grade class from Clarkdale in here. This used to be an old school. What happens when you go into schools? You have tests. Oh, oh no, we got a test. Uh-oh, this is bad news. Okay, here we go. We gotta have a test. We're gonna see if you paid attention in, in, in this old school building. Here's a question. Maybe you have to have some help. Who has more copper in their bodies, boys or girls? Girls! Remember I said girls and copper shared the same symbol? Amazingly, girls. boys or girls? Boys. Whoa, you're catching on quick. Now, the next question is, what's that make? That makes girls more valuable and boys more stronger. There you go. <laughs> so, any questions? You guys on the train or something? Superhero Iron Man.